you know, it's wild. Uh, even with all this AI stuff popping up everywhere, sometimes you just really need a human to kind of guide you through all the noise. Yeah, definitely. It's a lot to wade through. It really is. It's like that, uh, you know, the whole red pill, blue pill thing. Right. Do you want to just like skim the surface or do you want to really like go deep and understand something? I think that's the fun part, like really getting into it. I think so too. And I that's know. exactly what we're doing today. We're taking that red pill and we're going deep on N100 motherboards. Ooh, exciting. For building your own NAS. So. Yeah, for the DIY crowd. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, that's where our listeners are at right now. They are looking at building their own NAS, which for anyone who's not familiar is basically a personal server. Your own little data center. Yeah, yeah. For storing and accessing all your data, think of it like your own private cloud. Your own little cloud, exactly. Yeah, and they're curious if these N100 motherboards really live up to the hype as this kind of like budget-friendly option for getting this done. You know, that's the big question everyone's asking right now. Let's get into it. Yeah, so let's break it down. What are they, what makes them tick? All right, so N100 motherboards, they're built around Intel's Alder Lake N processors. And these chips, they're designed to sip power. Oh. Which is really perfect for something like a NAS that's running 24 seven. Okay, so we're talking like energy efficient. Very energy efficient. But what does that mean for performance. Does that mean we are sacrificing performance? How does that compare to, say, you know, my power-hungry gaming PC? That's a great question. You know, they're definitely not meant for, you know, high-end gaming or crazy video editing, but they have more than enough power for your typical NAS tasks. Right. You know, think storing your files, streaming movies with Plex or Jellyfin, and even running some lightweight applications like Docker. Okay, so you're saying they can handle like all the essential NAS functions without being like total energy hogs. Exactly, without guzzling all that electricity. That sounds promising, especially for someone like me. I'm always trying to, you know, keep my energy bill down. We all are. Yeah. So besides that, what else makes these boards stand out for NAS building? So usually with these boards, you get a good amount of SATA ports. Oh, so no. you can connect okay. all your hard drives. You know, you get lots of storage space. Lots of storage. Yeah. Plus, they often have M.2 slots for those super fast SSDs. And then they also tend to come in a compact ITX form factor. Oh, nice. So they don't take up a whole lot of space. So small but mighty. Small but mighty is right. I'm liking where this is going. You mentioned affordability before. Yeah. How much are we talking here? Like, what's the price point? So you can find these M100 motherboards starting around $100. Really? Which is which is honestly a steal compared to some of the other pricier options out there. So that low entry cost is definitely a huge part of their appeal. Wow. $100 to start building your own personal cloud. That's pretty incredible. But yeah. I know there's always a trade-off somewhere, right? What are some of the drawbacks that we need to be aware of? with these N100 boards? So the main thing to watch out for is the limited number of PCIe lanes. Okay. You know, these lanes are basically like the highways for data transfer within your computer. Like the data superhighway. <laughs> exactly. An N100 motherboard might have fewer lanes than a higher end board, and that could create a bottleneck if you're using multiple devices that need a lot of bandwidth at the same time. Okay, so paint me a picture. I'm trying to like stream a 4K movie to my living room. Right. I'm also like backing up my computer at the same time and maybe downloading a large file. Could that overtax the system? It's definitely possible. Okay. It really just depends on the specific devices and how much data they're trying to move at the same time. Right. So it's always crucial to check that motherboard's documentation and really plan out your hardware configuration. That makes a lot of sense. It's all about understanding like the limitations and working within them. Yeah, for sure. What about things like support and documentation, especially with these kind of newer boards? Are there any red flags there that we should be aware of? That's a great point. With some of the lesser known brands, you might find that like BIOS updates or troubleshooting resources. Right. And the overall support just isn't as robust as with those more established manufacturers. Okay, so doing your research and sticking with reputable brands is key. Definitely key. You don't want to be left in the lurch if something goes wrong. You don't want to be stuck. Yeah. Anything else we should keep in mind? One more consideration, especially if you're dealing with really critical data, is that most N100 boards don't have support for ECC memory. Okay, now what is that? So ECC stands for error correcting code. 
Oh. Mm-hmm. And it's designed to detect and correct errors in your data. Gotcha. So think of ECC memory as like a safety net for your data. Okay. It yeah. helps prevent those tiny little errors that could corrupt your files over time. That makes sense. For most home users, this might not be a huge deal, but if you're storing really important stuff like financial records or irreplaceable photos, a board with ECC support would be a safer bet. That's a really good point. It's about understanding your needs and choosing the right tool for the job, right? Absolutely. So we've talked a lot about the pros and cons of N100s. Yeah. How do they stack up against other options out there for building a NAS? That's a good question. Let's compare them to those traditional, you know, dedicated NAS-focused motherboards from brands like ASRock Rack and Supermicro. Okay. Yeah. These boards usually offer more features that are geared towards server use, like additional SATA ports, ECC memory support, and they have more comprehensive documentation, but they usually come at a higher price. Yeah, that makes sense. So it's like choosing between, you know, your basic toolkit and like a professional grade workshop. That's a great analogy. You get more specialized tools with a professional setup, but it's going to cost you. Right, exactly. What about those pre-built NAS devices you see from companies like Synology and QNAP? Yeah. Where do those fit in? Pre-built NAS devices, those are fantastic. For ease of use, I mean, you pretty much just plug them in and you're ready to go. Yeah. They usually come with user-friendly software that handles all the technical stuff behind the scenes. But you do pay a premium for that convenience, and you're often limited in terms of customization and expansion. Right. With a DIY N100 setup, you have way more control over the components, and you can really tailor it to your exact needs and budget. So for our listener out there who likes to tinker and really wants to get the most bang for their buck, the N100 route seems like a pretty strong contender. I'd say so, yeah. But building a NAS isn't just about the motherboard, right? No, definitely not. What about the case? Ah, yes, the case. Does the compact size of these N100 boards limit the options there? So that's a really good point. You'll want to look for a case that's specifically designed for smaller motherboards, usually referred to as mini ITX cases. Okay. Think of the kind you might see for like a compact gaming PC build. So we're not talking about those giant server racks they have in data centers. No, no, definitely not. There are tons of sleek and compact mini ITX cases out there that are perfect for an N100 NAS build. Some popular choices include the Fractal Node 304, the Silverstone DS380, or even the ultra compact John's Bow N2. I'm picturing these little boxes just tucked away on a shelf, (laughs) silently managing all my data. Yeah, exactly. Real discreet. It's a cool image, but I imagine case selection goes beyond just looks. What are some of the key factors that our listener needs to consider when picking a case? For sure. So drive capacity is a big one. How many hard drives do you want to be able to install in your NAS? Make sure the case has enough bays to accommodate your storage needs. Makes sense. Another crucial aspect is cooling. These N100 systems are designed to be energy efficient, but they still generate some heat, especially when they're working hard. Right. So you'll want a case with good airflow to keep everything running smoothly. Right, because nobody wants a NAS that sounds like a jet engine taking off. No, for sure not. What are some of the options for cooling in these smaller cases? So you've got your two main approaches, passive cooling and active cooling. Passive cooling relies on heat sinks and the natural flow of air to dissipate heat. It's generally quieter, but might not be enough for really demanding workloads. Active cooling uses fans to move air more forcefully, which is better for keeping things cool under heavy use, but you might get a bit more noise. So it's a trade-off. Silence versus cooling capacity. Exactly. It all comes back to knowing your needs and choosing the right balance for your particular setup. For sure. And of course, aesthetics matter too. Uh, Some of those cases you mentioned look pretty sharp. Oh yeah, definitely. But let's move on to the software side of things. What operating systems are people typically using for these N100-based NAS builds? Yeah, so there's a whole world of options there, and that's actually one of the really exciting parts of building your own NAS. You can go with a dedicated NAS operating system like TrueNAS Core or OpenMedia Vault, or you could choose a more general-purpose Linux distribution like Ubuntu Server. Okay, break that down for our listener. What are the key differences between those options, and how do you know which one's right for you? So dedicated NAS operating systems like TrueNAS Core, which is based on FreeBSD, are specifically designed for network storage and offer a really user-friendly web interface for managing your NAS. They often come with built-in features for things like RAID management, file sharing, even media streaming. So if you're looking for a more plug-and-play experience that's focused on that NAS functionality, these are a great place to start. So if you're not super comfortable with the command line or really diving into the nitty-gritty technical details, 
Those dedicated operating systems sound like a good option. Yeah, exactly. What about Linux distributions like Ubuntu Server? What are the advantages there? So Linux distributions like Ubuntu Server give you a lot more flexibility and control over the underlying system. You can install and configure a wider range of software and really tailor the system to your specific needs, but it does require a bit more technical know-how and comfort with using the command line. So again, it's a trade-off, ease of use versus flexibility. Mm. Right. With a dedicated NAS OS, you get a more streamlined experience, but with Linux, you have the mm. power to tinker and customize to your heart's content. Exactly, yeah. What would you say are some of the most popular use cases for these N100-based NAS systems? They're so versatile, which is part of the appeal. One of the most common use cases is setting up a home media server. So you can store all your movies, TV shows, music, photos on your NAS and stream them to any device in your house. So it's like having your own personal Netflix or Spotify, but with all your own content. Exactly, yeah. What about backups? Is that a good use for an N100 NAS? Absolutely. Backups are crucial. And an N100 NAS is a great way to centralize your backups and protect your important data. You can back up all your computers, phones, tablets to your NAS, and you can even set up automated backups so you don't have to think about it. That peace of mind alone is probably worth the price of admission. Oh, yeah, definitely. What other interesting things can people do with these systems? Another popular use case is running lightweight applications in Docker containers. Docker is a platform that lets you package and run applications in these isolated environments, which makes it really easy to set up and manage things like web servers, download managers, even home automation tools. Wait, hold on. You're telling me I could use my N100 NANs to control my smart home devices? You got it. That's pretty wild. It's all about finding the right software and configurations, but... The possibilities are pretty much endless. You can turn your N100 NAS into the central hub of your digital life. That's pretty amazing. So we've covered the hardware, the software, the case options, even some of the really cool things you can do with an N100 NAS. Seems like we painted a pretty comprehensive picture here. Anything else our listeners should know before embarking on their own N100 NAS adventure? One thing I would definitely emphasize is the importance of community and resources. The online community surrounding N100 NAS builds is incredibly active and supportive. There are forums, Reddit communities, YouTube channels, blogs dedicated to sharing knowledge, troubleshooting tips, build inspiration. So it's like having a whole network of tech-savvy friends who are there to help you along the way. Exactly. And that sense of community is one of the things that makes DIY NAS building so rewarding. You're not just buying a product. You're really joining a community of passionate individuals who are excited to help you learn and create. It's like that old saying, right? If you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. That's a good one. Having that community support can make all the difference, especially when you're kind of venturing into new tech territory like this. But I think our listeners are pretty well equipped now to take those first steps. I think so, too. We've covered a lot of ground. What would you say is like the biggest takeaway for someone who's considering an N100 motherboard for their NAS build? You know, I think the biggest takeaway is that N100 motherboards have really opened up the world of NAS building to a much wider audience. Yeah. They offer this really fantastic balance between affordability, power efficiency, and performance, and that makes them a great choice for, you know, a whole range of home server applications. It's almost like they've democratized NAS building. Exactly. You don't have to be like a tech expert or spend a ton of money to get started. Yeah, exactly. And that's what's so cool about it. Yeah, totally. It empowers people to like, Take control of their data. Yes. Learn new skills and build something that's truly their own. I love that. Yeah, that sense of empowerment and possibility. That's what makes technology so fascinating. For sure. So to our listener out there, if you've been thinking about building your own NAS, I hope this deep dive has given you the knowledge and the inspiration to just go for it. Definitely. The N100 platform is a really great place to start. And with the support of that awesome online community, you'll be up and running in no time. Absolutely. Happy building, everybody. Happy building.